Even though you see Montipora white syndrome, that lesion is associated with a variety of different things. For example, sometimes you'll see polychaete worms. I know you guys are not histopathologists, so you have to take my word for this, okay? But if this is normal coral tissue. You can see that this is the epidermis here. It's all fragmented, and all these are polychaete worms. They're actually feeding on the edge of that margin, okay? Here, we have tissue over here, and these guys all over there are ciliates, unicellular parasites that are again invading the coral tissue and actually causing death and, and lysis of the coral tissue. This is kind of intriguing. We don't know what this is. I, I've talked to parasitologists and, and I'm, I'm sending slides around. We have this organism here that's in the gastrovascular canals. This is the surface of the coral right here and it's all full of these little organisms here. They're multicellular parasites. I don't know what they are. It might be a new species, but we got to sort that out. And then we also see just tissue death. Uh, we don't know why that's going on. So we at least have three different potential etiologies that we could maybe deal with with this coral disease. So obviously the next logical step will be to bring this stuff into the aquaria, try to see if it's transmissible, again confirm it by microscopy, ideally isolate those organisms, and actually infect the corals and see if you can fulfill what's called Koch's postulate, which is basically trying to prove whether an infectious organism can reproduce the disease or not. So, bottom line is, is if you look at normal tissues, I'm sorry, disease tissues, about 25% of what, what we see are those little funky parasites that we talked about. Uh, necrosis is about 20%, ciliates is about 20%. About 50% or 40%, I guess, would be healing tissue. So again, that's part of that waxing and waning process. You can actually see on a cellular basis the healing of the coral tissue. So these guys get these insults, and then the corals are, are either able to fight it off, or the, these, these pathogens leave, and then the tissue heals, and then you get a new insult, and the process goes over and over. But as that progresses, the coral never really makes up the tissue loss. It appears from Greta's and Megan's studies that, that the tissue can continually goes away. So uh, that's pretty cool. And we're, we're, we're doing in-tank transmission studies. And hopefully we'll see what happens with that. OK, like Megan said earlier, um, I'm working with the microbial aspect of this project with Teresa Lewis. And um, we're trying to identify community structures um, and the healthy fragments versus the disease fragments. So in order to do this, we collected healthy fragments from Montefiore Capitata as well as disease fragments from Montefiore. And um, we collected the mucus from the healthy fragments from the healthy tissue, and then from the disease fragments only in um, these disease fronts right here. Uh, we did serial dilutions and then plated these serial dilutions on closer artificial seawater, which is a non-selective marine media, and as well as TCVS, which is a Vibrio-selective media. We used TCVS because Vibrio are not only opportunistic species, but they're also known to be associated with coral disease. This up here is an example of our closer artificial seawater plate. Um, and this is a perfect example of why we need to do serial dilutions because we did colony counts to compare the total abundance of bacteria compared to the Vibrio species. And when you have numbers this high, it's really hard to um, rely on your count numbers because um, from time to time, person to person, the amount you get can vary when you're dealing with thousands and thousands of colonies. So we dilute them down so that we can find a number that's easily countable, that's reliable from replication to replication. Um, this is an example of our TCVS plates. It's green, selective media, and the Vibrio colonies turn out all nice yellow color. Um, from these, we selected colonies from our closer artificial seawater plates, and we created stocks of these so that we can use them as archives and to have them for later purposes. Um, in progress right now is um, extracting the DNA, doing PCR, the 16S, um, blasting these sequences so we can compare them to known sequences in the database and species type these um, bacteria, as well as as soon as we get all our species data, we can generate community profiles. Um, I have about 100 species or sequence data right now from these bacteria, and um, at this point, that's not enough to say anything, so community structure is going to be um, later. First, we looked at the CFUs per mil um, per the healthy and the diseased corals. This is just strictly bacterial abundance on our non-selective media. Um, as you can see, there's clearly a difference in the healthy versus the diseased corals. Um, so what is going on in these disease that um, has them have a higher bacteria community? Uh, we also looked at the proportion of Vibrio species. Um, it, at first glance, it looks like the healthy has a higher proportion of Vibrio species than the disease. Um, but we did have one that 
one healthy that grew out different than the rest of them. This is potentially an outlier. We cannot say for certain yet. We're going to do more um, replications in order to increase our sample size. Um, but if you take that outlier out, it shifts the proportion over so that the disease has a higher proportion of the rare species than the healthy. Um, and like I said, we're going to do more replications until we can um, certainly say whether or not that's truly an outlier. We also noticed in field signs that there is a slow rate of tissue loss as well as a fast rate of tissue loss. And as Terry said, there are several things that are associated with Montefiore White Syndrome. So are these two signs um, similar to having different community structures? And so we looked at the proportion of embryo species in the slow versus the fast rate of tissue loss. And we noticed that in the slow rate, it had um, a decreased amount of Vibrio species and then the fast. So this leads us to believe that there is a different community structure in these two um, field signs, but we can't say for certain until we get the community structure from the sequence data, but that will come later. Also, we are working on transmission studies. We're going to work on um, whether or not this disease is directly transferable or indirectly transferable. And we're also going to, um, once we get the sequence data complete, we're going to try and do transmission studies with inoculating um, our tanks with cultures of bacteria and see if we can induce Montefiore White Syndrome. So ongoing histology, Terry's always working on the slides. Um, sequencing is still going, um, and then as soon as we get all that, we can begin to analyze the bacterial community structure, and then we're still working on transmission studies. Thanks. Are there any questions?